Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, you bless the wedding at Cana by your presence. And there you turned water into the finest wine. Throughout this blessed land, fill our hearts with joy and make us worthy to reflect upon your miracles and upon your teachings. To clothe ourselves with penance and to strengthen ourselves with prayer and good works. We glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Raise glory, honor, and praise to God the Father, who in his love invited all people to the wedding banquet of his only begotten Son. And to the Son, the heavenly bridegroom, who in his love accepted the invitation to the wedding banquet at Cana, where he changed water into wine. And to the Holy Spirit, who by his descent invites us to share in the banquet of the Father and the Son. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. O Christ, the only begotten Son, on this day you chose to sit among the invited guests, enriching them with the abundance of your divine gifts. As your disciples believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, we also believe in you. In place of the old law, you have given us your new gospel. And instead of the fruit of the vine, you have quenched our thirst with the chalice of your redeeming blood. Now, O Lord, we ask you, with the fragrance of this incense, and through the intercession of your ever-Virgin Mother, whose request you granted that we may always drink of your holy wine, quenching our thirst with your heavenly charity. May your light shine within the world, and may we know that you are the spring of living water from which we may drink. O Lord, bless our families and our Lenten journey that we may reach the harbor of salvation, which is the glorious feast of your resurrection. We glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever.
Glory to you, O Christ, our God, you are the true vine, and in your great and indescribable love, you were pressed upon the cross, producing new wine, which quenches the thirst of the church and of all the people. Now accept the fragrance of our incense and strengthen us that we may fast with pure hearts and with sincere penance and become worthy to share in your holy banquet. To you be glory and thanks to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Aloha, kori shant, hayal to no kori shant, lo yuto. your servants, Lord, thank you, for you made the water wine. Let your saints glorify you when your majesty will shine. letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, I know and am convinced in the Lord Jesus Christ that nothing is unclean in itself. Still, it is unclean for someone who thinks it unclean. If your brother is being hurt by what you eat, your conduct is no longer in accord with love. Do not, because of your food, destroy him for whom Christ died. So do not let your good be reviled, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by others. Let us then pursue what leads to peace, to building up one another. For the sake of food, do not destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to become a stumbling block by eating. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. Keep the faith that you have to yourself in the presence of God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself for what he approves. 
But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because this is not from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding of the feast of the Lamb. Alleluia. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint John, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, And on the third day there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. And when the wine had run short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. And so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. And they took it. And when the head waiter had tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it had come from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew. The head waiter called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man serves good wine first, and then, when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples came to believe in him. This is the truth, peace be with you.
And on the third day, there was a wedding feast in Cana. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This gospel is taken from the beginning of that of St. John. It's chapter 2. And the whole of the beginning of St. John through to chapter 3, really chapter 2, verse 13, is a transition from the old law to the new law, from the revelation of God to the presence among the disciples. And so the church has chosen this gospel for us for Lent because it's transition. It's a movement from one aspect of our lives to another. Here is a removal from the old law to the new law. You see all of these different details reflected uh, in the Husoyo. The presence of the bridegroom, the wedding. The wedding is not so much for the father, it's about the couple. It's about a presence of our Lord and Our Lady. And we'll talk about that aspect, the matrimonial aspect, at 11 o'clock. Otherwise, we'll be here until 11 o'clock if we do all of the details. This is one of the most profound uh, lessons that are given in the gospel, which is why it's the second luminous mystery. It is profound in all of its details of transition from the old, which is why you see six coming up, six purification jars. And the beginning of the gospel that I quoted is on the third day. So St. John, when he does, chapter, the very first opening of the gospel, of course, is the famous, in the beginning of the word, and the word was with God. You have a transition from there to the presence of John the forerunner, John the Baptist, and John's testimony that he winds up giving. Then you have the next day, the next day, the next day, and then on the third day. So what St. John is lining up for us is the transition is of the six days of creation. So that when you arrive at the wedding feast of Cana on the third day, that's the third following the previous next day, next day, next day, you're on a six day, six purification vessels. This transition from the six of the old creation, the seventh day being the Sabbath, and the movement then from the old law to the new law. It's one of the, St. John wants us to notif- notice this or else he wouldn't keep saying next day. And the next day winds up being the testimony of John the Baptist, this is the land of God. And it's John and Andrew who are the first ones to go off. And Andrew gets his brother, um, his John, excuse me, Andrew gets his brother Simon and you have that day. Then you have the next day in which they bring in Philip and Philip brings in Nathaniel. So you actually, when it talks about our Lord being invited with his disciples to Cana, there are five disciples at this wedding with our Lord. And it's very likely that Nathaniel is the connection with Cana. If you, there is a church dedicated to the memory of the wedding feast at Cana in Cana. And it's there connected with the person of the apostle Nathaniel. And so that is what's linked in this little town of Cana. So the connection is moving us from the revelation of God to the new law, and we arrive at six. In the classical world, and in the Old Testament specifically, even numbers are actually considered bad because they can break in half, whereas odd numbers don't break in half. And that's why oftentimes you'll see gestures and things that will be done in numbers. It's why historically you have on the steps to an altar, always an odd number. Here we have only two on the main altar because where this large step is here for the, the newer altar is actually was a step. They built the platform, but there were originally three steps. You can have three, five, all the way up to 15 is the maximum. Otherwise, after that, it becomes a little bit much. But always in odd numbers. The sanctuary lamps are supposed to be in odd numbers. And so the different aspects that are brought in is this transition from the old to the new, the changing of water of the law to the wine of grace, this abundance. And then as you see in the Husoyo, it reflects from the creation from changing of water into wine, the transformation of wine into his blood. 
And then you see echoed in the Husoyo that they take this, that our Lord in St. Ephraim's poetry has always be called the grape. Not the grape as an individual grape, but the bunch of grapes. And it's the pressing of that, the pressing then for St. Ephraim is on Calvary. And so that the blood, the wine that flows from the grape, which is our Lord, is that which becomes that wine that nourishes, as it says in the Husoyo, the church and all the nations. It quenches the thirst. So there are numerous details. Each one of them could be touched upon. It is also the transition from the mother of God. This is the last moment in which that we have any recorded words of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which of course quite famously is, do whatever he tells you. But that's the last words that we have recorded from her. So this whole transition that takes place of changing water into wine, the wine into his blood, this whole transition is this moment conjunction with the hour which is why the reference to being pressed out upon the cross is because our Lord also makes reference to his hour here. The hour is the moment of our Lord's victory, but you will hear it echoed in St. John during the arrest of our Lord, now is the power of the hour of darkness. So that the hour of our Lord and the hour of iniquity, they correspond, they coincide in the recounting of the Gospel of St. John. Our Lord on several occasions will mention his hour. And so when he says, to his, he says to his mother, what is that to me and to you? It's an old Hebraic term. In other words, it has nothing to do with us. This isn't our wedding. This is not, this is not has nothing to do with us. And he winds up calling her woman. That is the link with the matrimonial relationship that there is between our Lord. They are the new Adam and the new Eve. But again, We'll cover that more at 11. But what we have here in this transition then is from the old, which is why St. John wants us to understand that these purification, these vessels that are there are for the old purification rites of the Jewish law that he is transforming. So they are filled to the brim, we are told in detail. When you read the Gospel of St. John, be attentive to every single word that is in there. All of the Gospels, of course, are inspired. But St. John has crafted his Gospel in such a way that he recounts only certain, he only recounts seven miracles out of all of the untold numbers that our Lord accomplished because each one is a sign. And again, he doesn't use the term, this is the first miracle of our Lord performed in Cana. He says it's the first of his signs. A sign is something that indicates something else and by indicating brings together the observer and whatever the reality is that's being signified. That's why we use the word also symbol. Symbol literally means to, in Greek, it means to be thrown together. The sign is the thing that brings together the observer, the contact, and the one that is indicated by the sign which is why the sacraments themselves are the efficacious signs of God's presence. They are not only indicating the presence of our Lord and the work of grace, but they are bringing together the participant into that one sign, which is why immediately following after saying, this is the first of the signs, we're told that his disciples begin to believe in him. They see something. When we use our word miracle, Miracle is from the Latin mirare. Mirare means to, to wonder, to marvel at something. It's our word admiration. Admiration literally in Latin literally means the action of being wondering at, ad, admiratio. So a miracle indicates that this is spectacular. This is shocking. This is surprising. But St. John doesn't use that term. He uses the term that each of the things that God does in our lives is transformative to those who have eyes to see. This is another lesson that is given to us of why Cana Sunday is chosen to be the first, the beginning of Lent. And yes, this is today the first day of Lent, and tomorrow will be the imposition of ashes. To make it easy, we have a Mass at 9 in the morning and a Mass at 6 in the evening to receive ashes. We are the only Easterners who impose ashes. So our Ash Monday, then, is tomorrow. 
This transformation, this movement, this whole aspect of sign, of what we see, Lent then is for us, year after year, a sign, a moment of grace on how we react to it. The word Lent just means spring in the Old English. Fast means strength. When we talk about it as being the great fast, it's because we take this six week, we take this 40 day period to become truly serious about our Christian lives. It is a tithe. It is a return of 10% of the entire year. Slightly more, I know there's 365 days in the year, and we're talking about 40 here, but it's all right, don't be stingy. It is meant to be this tithe of a return of the moments of grace that our Lord is giving us. So that the other lesson that we have is that everything that God does is in teaching us in time. And in the transition that we see in the movement to the third chapter of St. John is going to be all about baptism. Unless you be born again, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And the transition is in the second half of this chapter 12 in which our Lord, after this miracle at Cana, he returns to Nazareth, with his, to, excuse me, actually to Capernaum. And then from there we're told it is the Passover of the Jews. And St. John doesn't say just the Passover as the other gospels do, is he uses the terminology in verse 13 of the Passover of the Jews. And in the Gospel of St. John, our Lord will talk in speaking to the Jews. He will say, you say, or it is found in your law, or your temple will be left to you. There's always this distinction being made because St. John wants us to understand the transition from the old. And Israel that hangs on refusing the Messiah, they're just simply the Jews. They're no longer in expectation of the Messiah. They've rejected him. So while the other Gospels will just leave it open for the Passover, St. John wants us to understand it is something which is now obsolete. The Passover of the Jews. And our Lord goes up, and in chapter 2, it is the cleansing of the temple. Our Lord coming in, making a whip out of rope, and chasing everyone out of the esplanade around the temple, merchandising. That is the beginning of St. John. And that's all you wind up having by the end of chapter 2 of a, of a gospel that has, I believe, 21 chapters in it. So you have a dramatic shift that St. John wants us to understand, to understand the notion of sign. So that in our repentance, it is a training period. But most importantly, it is for us to see the signs of God working in our lives individually which is why next week is the healing of the blind man. And so there is a structure for us that we enter into Lent and to do so generously. That's why the patriarch even reminds us to, if, if, if the effort is too hard to do the entire 40 days in our soft modern world, to at least do the fast, the first and the last weeks fully, the whole week. And you have all the traditional and the patriarchal norms of the fast in the bulletin this week. And they'll be there for the whole time, of course, reminding us gently, silently, what are we doing? What's my day look like? How am I actually spending this tithe of this 40 days in order that our Lord can open our eyes, see the signs that he accomplishes around us so that at the end of these 40 days, we come out more faithful children of God than we were before we entered and a greater freedom within our liberty within that childhood and within that discipleship so that we become continually in that movement towards our Lord to find that transformation of a life which is fairly shallow with just being water, to be transformed into wine by grace. This is the purpose of Lent. It is a full training period for us to seriously enter into the signs of the God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and he came man. For our sake he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Thalalaius. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today 
in this offering. to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Merciful and only Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Peace to you, O hope, server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give you a greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. peace and security and true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever Amen. O Lord we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is 
Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. Employs you and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. 
תמור רוח חיו קרישו, ונחן עלינו ועל קרבונו הונו. so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your Church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the Bishops of the True Faith, with blameless lives, and with purity, and with holiness, may they guide your Church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O oh Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings, forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them, for you are good, for you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen, the archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Marin, St. Thelelius, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O oh Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. And rest, O oh God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O oh God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are thine, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Lukulukunna. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing of the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and be made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence, and humility, and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One holy Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and for the glory of your holy name and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el-Lukulukun. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Do 
Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name. For we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.